الحمد لله نحمده ونستغفره ونستعينه ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على حبيبنا وسيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين عباد الله أوصيكم ونفس المقصرة أولا بتقوى الله فاتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ثم أما بعد All praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most gracious, the most merciful the best of his peace and blessings shall be bestowed upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon those that follow his footsteps the best of them Dear brothers and sisters in Islam every time we meet, every time you attend Salat al-Jum'ah It should be a time that's invested in learning more about our deen, learning more about the application of our deen and our dunya. It is a blessing and it's great that we have an amazing deen that's capable of managing our life to get the best out of it. But it's also important for us to learn and understand how we can apply this deen to take it from the level of theories to the level of application so we can indeed improve our lives. And as we all know, there are many misconceptions when it comes to certain ideas in Islam or certain concepts. And those misconceptions are very critical and dangerous because they might turn what could be an excellent idea, a constructive idea, to a very destructive one. And when it's a very destructive idea, that means it could be a cause of pushing a person away from his deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah, So your understanding of this Qur'an and the concepts of this deen could have two effects on you. Could attract you or it could repel you. It will attract you if you understand it properly. It will attract you if you know what it means and how to apply it. But if you start misunderstanding it and misinterpreting it and misapplying it, it will push you away and will push everybody from this great deen. So it is very critical for us to make sure that we understand the concepts properly. And one of the most important concepts that are misunderstood is the concept of manhood, a rujula. And on the other hand, the concept of being a woman in Islam. So being a true man in Islam, what does it mean? How does it affect our lives to understand what does it mean to be a man? And what does it mean to be a woman? At the same level of importance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Hujurat, said, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنَّا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ وَأُنْثَىٰ وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا لِتَعَارَفُوا إِنَّا أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَانِ And in Surah An-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ نَفْسِ الْوَاحِدَةِ وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا و 
وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء. So in the first ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in males and females. ذكرين وأنثى. And in the second ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned رجالا كثيرا ونساء. Men and women. What is the difference? And is it important to know the difference? Because a lot of times in our fast-paced world, people would say, who cares? It's the same thing. It means the same thing. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Because it's important for us to distinguish and learn and understand so we can improve. There's a reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used these two words in different applications, if you will. We will learn that manhood, a rujula, is a quality, is not a type. Is a quality and not a type. Hiya sifa, wa So it does not mean that you're born as a male, that you are a man. Because there are things that we have to do. Why? Because there is a, a concept in life that we really need to perfect is what Rasulullah taught us in al ilmu bi ta'allum wa al ilmu bi tahallum There are things that we have to do to continuously improve ourselves, to continuously enhance our lives. We are created as a learning machine, if you will. We always have to learn and improve and learn and improve. You're created as a male, but then you need to become a man. So the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you, O oh Father, with three males, they're not going to turn on their own, they're not going to turn men. You have a job to do, to help them become men. Because eventually, it's men that we need. What do I mean by that? Let's learn from Al-Quran Al-Kareem. We'll go over a few ayat. So, inshallah, we'll understand the meaning of a rujula or manhood. In the first ayah in Surah Yusuf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ إِلَّا رِجَالًا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِمُ In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to a certain type of rijal, al-mursaleen alayhim wa ala rasulina salatu wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the messengers the best of people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called them rijal. <coughs> Referring to his messengers, to his prophets, the people that got revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most righteous people, they got the piety, they got the deen, but Allah's calling them rijal. What's in their prophethood that made them rijal? Why Rijal? The following ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Tawbah talks about establishing a masjid, Masjid ala taqwa where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, The masjid al-ussisa ala taqwa in awwal yawmin ahaqqu an taquma fihi fihi Rijal. Ila akhir al ayah. A story of establishing and constructing a masjid based on piety and righteousness. And in that masjid, fihi rijal. Why rijal again? What's the common denominator with the same rijal mentioned for the messengers? The following ayah, fi surat al-nur, fi buyutin adina allahu an turfa, wa yuthkara fi hasmuhu, yusabbihu lahu fiha بِالْغُدُوِّ وَالْأَصَالِ مَنْ رِجَالٌ رِجَالٌ لَا تُلْهِيهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ وَلَا بَيْعٌ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Again, رجال رجال that are constructing masajid that are focused on, our, on their deen that are not distracted by bay' wa tijara they're not distracted by their work they're not distracted by their trades they're not distracted by their businesses, let alone being distracted by fun and games 
and luxury. They're not distracted by the main things in life, which is business and making your living. But then again, they're called Rijal. In the following ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us in Surah Al-Ahzab, مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ رِجَالٌ صَدَقُوا مَعَاهَبُ اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَضَى لَحْبَهُ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَنْطَضُ Again, a group of Al-Mu'mineen that are also called Rijal, men. They were truthful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They delivered what they promised. They're again called Rijal. And in the last, well, the following ayah in Surah Yasin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we all know the story very well, when He informed us about, وَجَاءَ مِنْ أَقْسَى الْمَدِينَةِ رَجُلٌ يَسْعَى وَجَاءَ مِنْ أَقْسَى الْمَدِينَةِ رَجُلٌ يَسْعَى A man came from the end, end of the city or from the other end of the city in a rush. Why is he also a man? And in the last ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah An-Nisa said, الرجال قوامون على النساء. الرجال قوامون على النساء. And we get to explain the word قوامون. But putting all these ayahs together, what is the common denominator between الرجال الأنبياء المرسلين, the messengers, between the Rijal that established the masjid, between the Rijal that were truthful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fulfilled their duties, between a Rajul that came from the end of the city for something important, and between a Rijal that are qawwamuna ala nisa. What is the common denominator? If you look at all these men, you would find something very important. As for Rasul alayhim wa ala rasulina salatu wa salam, these are men that spend their lives in serving others. These are men that spend their lives in luxury? No. In a state of continuous work, hardship, tiredness, fatigue. Working tirelessly day and night for whom? For themselves. We all know that Rasulullah passed away and he had no wealth and no money. And he could have. He did not work for himself. These are men that were serious about serving others and helping others and protecting others. Same thing in the following ayah, the men that established the masjid, for whom? We all come to this masjid, alhamdulillah, and we see the masjid is bait min buyutillah. It's the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nobody benefits from it. It's the benefit of the ummah, it's the benefit of the community, the benefit of the group. Again, men that works in a harsh condition, tirelessly, day and night, to serve others and to benefit others. Same thing. The ones that fought for their deen, for their country, sacrificing their lives, for whom? for the rest of the community to have a good life. Going through hardship, tough times for the community and to help others. The man that came from the other end of the city was Why did this man do this in Surat? Yasin, we all know the story. He came from the other end of the city advising his people, his community to follow the messengers. And he had absolutely no personal gain. He went through the hardship. He went through the, 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 the 
I want, I want to know what was the weather like, what was the condition like, what was the, what, the, what was the road condition like for him to travel from one end of the city to the other. Why? Just to advise people for the people. Men are qawwamun ala nisa. What does qawwamun mean and how does it fit with the rest of the ayat? Al qawwam min al qiyam, min qama qiyam, to stand up. Now, unfortunately, and that's where the whole topic started, a lot of people believe that rijal qawwamun ala nisa, that means you men are simply, because you are a male, the master of woman. This is the concept. And it doesn't only exist in our community, by the way. The idea of manhood being the master, it's a human instinct. It's, it, it exists everywhere. But let's say what Islam says about it. And how does Islam regulate the idea if you're not fully knowledgeable in Islam and the teachings of Islam and the words of Arabic, you will read this ayah in the same context. Men are masters of women, but it's absolutely the opposite. We said qawwamuna from al qiyam. Qiyam is to be standing up. When you're a master, you'll be sitting down. You'll be sitting down and everybody will serve you. But no, you have to be standing up. Standing up doing what? Standing up taking care of all the affairs of the woman. You're the one serving. You're the one providing. You're the one going through the hardship to offer provision, safety, shelter, food. And in the word qawwam, there's a, a form of exaggeration happen once. It's a continuation of your qiyam. You're always on your toes, producing and working in the best of conditions and the worst of conditions. Hardship, sweating to give. For whom? And Nisa. This is in your house, in your household. But it also applies to outside of your household. Anybody that is weak. Anybody that is weak. Your job as a man is to help and provide and work for others and work tirelessly for the benefit of others. And on the word qawwam or qawwamun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Hujurat told us in this famous ayah, آمنوا, منهم, So in this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not use the word rijal, did not use the word dhakar, he used the word qawm. Again as a proof that al Qiwama is a word used, is a description, is a quality of a male that's a man. A male that's, that has true manhood. Qawm, because these people who are considered the uh, 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 leaders of the community, al Qawm, these are the ones that are always standing up to serve others. That are always working to serve and protect and provide and build. <coughs> so when we put the whole thing together and we ask ourselves, what does manhood mean in Islam? We remember an important ayah in Surah Taha. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, talking, addressing Adam alayhi salam and Hawa alayhi salam, 
وليزد إن هذا عدو لك ولزوجك فلا يخرجنكما من الجنة فتشقى فتشقى أنت الله سبحانه وتعالى is talking to both Adam and Eve عليهما رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم and he said beware of shaytan iblis beware of him he's your enemy do not allow him to drive you out of your jannah out of your sacred place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you and guess what if he does if he succeeds in pushing you out of this place what's going to happen you're the one that's going to work hard. Who's you? Adam. Who's Adam? Abu Bashar or Abu Rija. Adam resembles all men. By moving out of that sacred place and coming to earth, the job of a man is, becomes what? Tashqa. You want to become a man? Tashqa. Tashqa li tus'ida ghayrak. Your job as a man is to go through the hardship, to go through the tiring hours of labor, work, the tiring hours of dealing with stresses at work and here or there. Why? <clears throat> so your family will live happily. In accordance to your level of production. And it doesn't matter if your hard work produces a million dollars a month, or your hard work produces a thousand dollars a month. It's not labeled or tied to a dollar sign. It's the amount of passion and work that you put in your daily activity to serve. It's the amount of love and mercy when you think about your wife and children while you're working that feeling of tiredness, you put it, thinking about them, to give them a better life. And this is what makes any male a man. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us understand these concepts and apply them. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. So my dear brothers and sisters, dear parents, dear fathers, dear mothers, life in general and our community is in need of men. Men that will work hard to produce and construct and give and provide. My advice to all parents, that be very careful if you have boys. We'll talk about girls next time, inshallah. But if you have boys, be very careful not to be a reason to destroy their manhood. How can you as a parent destroy the manhood of your boys, of your sons? What destroys manhood? If manhood is about hard work, is about roughness to work and produce tirelessly, that means if you teach your kids to be dependent, they can't even get up and get a glass of water for themselves, that's going to affect their manhood at a very young age. If you teach your kids to live in luxury all the time, not to depend on themselves, not to work hard to produce, you are destroying their manhood. They become dependent, they become lazy, they become focused on themselves because remember, manhood is working hard to serve others. Rasulullah spent all of his life and his prophethood, we all read the seerah and we know, with the hard work day and night, walking to a ta'if, 
to deliver a message to serve others, getting hurt, getting abused, but coming back and trying again. Because he was a real man, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Sahaba al-Kiram, Umar ibn al-Khattab, at the time of his governance, of his khilafah, staying up late at night to go check on his community, check on people, making sure everybody is served, everybody is happy, everybody is safe. He said in his last year of Khilafah an amazing statement. He said, oh by Allah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept me till next year, I will go to every city in my state, in my Islamic world, and live two months in each one of them so I can understand the needs of my people. He said, I can't sleep at night. If I sleep at night, I will waste my deen. And if I sleep in the daytime, I will waste the rights of my ummah. We all know the story of him staying up late, going to check on his people. This is manhood. We want our sons to be like Umar, like Salah al-Din, like Khalid. They need to become men. We need to help them become men. If their focus, remember in that ayah, رجال لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله They're not distracted by the important things, let alone being distracted by the silly things. Their lives are distracted by video games, movies, fun. Where is manhood? How would they become men if they cannot push themselves to do something difficult? Because the generation wants everything easy. And I see, alhamdulillah, a lot of young brothers here today. And I'm glad that you're here to listen to me and I hope you get what I'm saying. If you want everything easy, you don't want to become a man. Because men do not settle for easy things. Men will work hard to deliver the best results. Will work hard to provide and construct, because constructing and developing is not easy. And will only be delivered successfully by men. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all and to bless this young generation to become the men that we want to see in our ummah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enlighten our hearts and enlighten our minds. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us our deen and help us understand it and help us apply it. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us follow the footsteps of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and shower us with his mercy. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all the weak ones across the globe. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our brothers and sisters that are suffering in every part of the world, in Syria, in Palestine, in Iraq, in Kashmir, in Mصر, in Yemen, wherever they exist. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them, to shower them with His mercy. Innahu ala kulli shayin qadir. Allahumma lakta wa salluna ala nabi. يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل عليه في الأولين وصل عليه في الآخرين وصل عليه في المنا على يوم الدين الله يبارك بالعبد والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وإنها عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واستغفروا ويغفر لكم والله يعلم ما تصنعون